Welcome to Pop Turnitin, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Ramoliotis, a.k.a. PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnitin Podcast. This is the podcast where we have digital discussions in the worlds of pop culture, social media, sports, everything really. I'm just going to introduce my guest. I am with... Act, an actor, you've seen him in TV, you've seen him in movies, you've seen him in shows such as The Flash, Shooter, Homeland, we've seen him in movies as well, 300, Godzilla, we're with Patrick Sabanki. Patrick, welcome to Pop Alternative. Pleasure to be here, Peter, thanks for having me. Let's get right into it. When did you kind of decide you wanted to be a storyteller? What did you like? What were you, what kind of drew you to this field? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I always... Uh, I was a I was a very social creature. I loved people. I loved uh, bringing people together and participating creatively in things. Uh, you know, I studied dance when I was in junior high. Uh, you know, I did Swan Lake and I did ballets, and uh, there was something about performing that I was very comfortable about. Um, and then when I took a uh, grade ten drama class with uh, with Mr. Cohen at Sir Winston Churchill High School. Um, there was something about uh, being able to experience other aspects of life that I wouldn't normally be able to experience. And I think I was so in love with life and with experiences and with learning about different people and different parts of the world that acting just seemed like, or storytelling, I love that you call it storytelling, by the way. Uh, storytelling was a way for me to experience more of life. No, that's really good. If someone would look at your IMDB, they would kind of see there's a lot of action, whether it's the film or the movie. You've done a lot of action. Is it safe to yeah. say that that's kind of your favorite genre to maybe watch and to work in as well? Yeah. I mean, as I get older, it's, uh, you know, it evolves and I evolve and, you know, I'm a, I'm a dad now and, the, you know, the stakes in my personal life are much higher. But, uh, yeah, I mean... Participating in, in in physical storytelling has always been, and I think we all start off that way. Mm -hmm. I think when we're kids and we run around playing pretend, you know, there's some drama and there's some comedy, but we're running around playing pretend, climbing off things, throwing things at each other. And I don't know, uh, I w I've always just been playful. And I think uh, an extension of that playfulness and in storytelling. And I was, you know, I had a very physical uh, background, you know, I played sports and I, I did martial arts, and uh, and then I really started in the theater, where you know, if your character has something physical to do in the theater, you have to learn how to do that. That's just part of the process in the theater. Mm -hmm. uh, so, evolving into the you know action genre in film and TV was a natural progression, I think. No, abs no, absolutely. You've been you you've done a lot of cool roles. You've done a lot of notable roles, but I think you know the role I want to talk about um, is your role on the Flash, because yeah. I think um, that you know the comic universe, like the comic book um, universe or um, sphere, whatever you like to call it, it's huge. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know what you think about this because I'm not. I don't think Patrick, it's gone away but have you not noticed a little bit of a boom in like the comic cons and like it's just massive yeah. the last couple of years yeah and the whole like you said the whole universe is expanding not just the story universe mm -hmm. but you know the marketing universe and the number of shows and i get worried about saturation mm -hmm. like i love superheroes as much as the next guy but for a while it seemed like every new show and still every season a new set of superhero shows come out and a new set of superhero movies and it kind of, uh, you know, and now the Comic Cons and the conventions and great opportunities to interact with fans. Uh, and I get worried that people are going to get sick of it, but it hasn't slowed down yet. No, absolutely. It's funny you say that. There's a lot of movies, like, for example, you were in Godzilla, right? And Godzilla is a movie that from time to time gets remade or spinoffs and everything. And yeah. I think that that's a formula in, you know, Hollywood or just that that's being used where it's just a big action epic with a big monster but people are going to see those movies like i don't think i don't think that's ever going away no it captures our imagination you know it, it's a way of kind of uh breaking loose of everyday mundane uh uh you know routines and there's something about monsters and 
flying and superheroes and magic uh, that I think we need that in our lives, mm -hmm. especially as we get older and, uh, you know, bills and taxes and applications for university and all these, you know, these uh, really heavy things kind of take over your everyday life. Mm -hmm. We want to feel a little bit of magic. No, absolutely. So we're both Canadian and we're both from Montreal. Yep. I got to cool mention that. Yeah. Um, I got to say, I'm really happy because I've had a few, uh, I've had a few actors from the, both shows on, on Pop Turnative in the past. And I just see, it just seems like Canadian television is really, really taking off. Like it's getting popular. Two shows specifically that just got distribution, distribution in the United States, Letter Kenny and Kim's yeah. Convenience, right? Yeah. So yeah. what, for someone who's from Montreal and has been in, you know, some Canadian TV and Canadian film, what do you think has been some of the biggest changes in the last couple of years? Is it, you know, the online streaming aspect of it, more people could see it, but one can make an argument. It's always been good, but maybe the discovery aspect has made it a lot easier for people to find. Um, yeah, I think that's a great point. The democratization of, of media and the fact that we have access to bigger fan base through, you know, free platforms and uh, more accessible platforms. And the fact that, um, look, Canada has a much smaller market than the United States. We just don't have access to the same scale of budgets that the United States has. Uh, that doesn't mean that we're not capable of creating quality content. It just means we don't have the budgets. Uh, and as technology has also gotten more accessible, uh, we're able to make world-class content with smaller budgets. Mm -hmm. And I think um, the, the combination of those two things is that cameras are just cheaper. Lights and, and equipment is just more accessible. Plus, we have more platforms to get stuff out. Plus, the fact that uh, Canada is a an amazing country full of amazing, talented people with an amazing perspective on the world. Uh, and uh, we have amazing stories to tell. And a lot of Canadians have been working and developing their craft for decades, you know, in this country on other productions and on Canadian productions. And we've just been evolving as a nation of storytellers. No, uh, absolutely. And I think we've just hit this critical mass where we're unstoppable now. Yeah. And it's just really cool to see just the, the content out there and that ever like I, I like from like, you know, um, hockey Twitter. I know a lot of people from the U.S. and they're watching Letter Kenny and they're saying, man, like this show is close to home, you know, it reminds me of Minnesota. <laughs> and it's just like now they have access to it, you know. Yeah. So the access is incredible. I got, yeah. I got a two part question for you. Um, and we're like, so. For regardless of the Flash, because we talked about the Flash, people know you from the Flash. We get that, you know. But regardless, so I want to know because there's going to be roles that um, are going to be important for your career. That uh, for two reasons: one, because they're important to you specifically. They might not be super big roles. They might not be notable roles, but the roles that are important to you because you kind of had an amazing learning experience or you kind of met cool people along the way. And then there's going to be roles that are important for you because they help you get noticed. They kind of allowed you to work with uh, amazing people and, you know, like the flash big show. So my first question is what is your favorite role that you have had that's important to you, like your favorite role you've ever played. And then the second question is, what do you think people know you from the most besides the flash because of your performance or what, what show it was? Yeah. Uh, that's really good questions. So, um, I, I take it, you mean in film and TV, right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Theater too. But, um, well, there's uh, speaking of Canadian, uh, content, I did a film, uh, early last, it came out early last year, um, called Drone, uh, by a Canadian filmmaker named Jason Bork. Uh, and it starred myself and Sean Bean, uh, speaking of amazing actors. Um, and it's a, uh, it's a, a very intense, intimate drama. Uh, and I, I'd say that's probably in terms of fulfilling roles, that's probably one of my favorite experiences so far. Um, I like being entrusted with the story and I like being an integral part of the heart of the story that we're telling. And 
that film is very much a story about my character. And it also has a very, um, uh, a very current and relevant uh, social political message. Um, it's about an Indo-Pakistani man whose family is killed in a U.S. drone strike um, in northern Pakistan. And um, in telling that story, we get to touch on a lot of the, you know, social issues that are very important to me and to people who look like me these days. Uh, and as a, uh, a, a filming experience, it was incredible. It was, most of it takes place in one, in one house. Yep. Uh, so we got to really kind of uh, make a pressure cooker out of that environment. You know, we shot in very condensed amount of time and it was very intense and everybody showed up to work very committed to the story uh it was kind of a dream process and i and i love the film the, the film itself is is amazing so in terms of fulfilling uh roles that's definitely up there um and the second part of your question was what other big shows might people recognize me from breakout roles type thing you know uh you know, I gotta say, Homeland was a big deal. Um, and, you know, I was I was in season six, and um, that had always just been one of my favorite shows. And I actually tweeted a picture. Uh, I was in my backyard when I got the booking, uh, when I got the call from my agent saying you booked this role, and my wife kind of and I just kind of, you know, it was I was overwhelmed, man, and uh, my wife took a picture of me in that moment where I was finding out and tweeted it out. And you can see like, it's just, I love the show and I have such a high regard for the content and the artists on that show. Uh, and it's a huge show with an international following. So uh, that was also a very rewarding experience, but also kind of a, you know, a bigger gig that people might recognize me from. Absolutely. It's funny because I just thought of this right now and I think it would be kind of cool to discuss. Or like, so Orange is the New Black just dropped on Netflix, season six, right? That dropped this on Friday, right? I'm, and my question has to do with the impact of TV these, the, the, these couple of years because it's such a big impact and binge watching is a, is a, like, a, has a mind of its own. It's a beast. You know what I mean? Binging is huge, right? I'm wondering if TV has, leverage over film because of the fact that boom you know some amazing movies come out on friday but orange is the new black is coming out you can you're off the go anywhere you can kind of watch it stay home watch for the weekend i'm wondering if there's kind of like a race going on between the two. Oh man i think to be honest i think the hollywood film industry is going to have to adapt adapt and evolve very quickly because not only is TV accessible and like you say, you know, you can sit there and binge watch 12 hours, 20 hours of amazing content, but TV is so dope right now. It is. Like some of the best stuff being made is on TV, you know, and, and you're already paid up on your Netflix or Amazon Prime and you have this instant access to some of the best content being created regardless of it's film and and like i mean i went to see a film yesterday with my family and it's great but that's man you're gonna take two kids and your wife to go see a film you're gonna have to go to dinner first you're gonna get popcorn it, that's an investment you know it's a huge amount of time and it's just impractical uh not to say that the, the film the, the cinematic experience isn't worth it but you don't have to go to the films to get some of the best performances the best stories the best writing the most cinematic direction you look at shows like you know westworld and uh game of thrones and uh and you know black lightning and everything you can get like the action and the cinematography and the intense story and the the deeply woven storylines you could just get that on TV now. So I think TV is definitely giving film a run for its money. Oh, absolutely. And, and you know, the, all the comic book shows out there, like The Flash. Like, before we wrap up, too, The Flash, what were kind of some of your, like, favorite experiences on that show and with your character? Like, what, like, it must have been, like, so much fun. Yeah. Well, I mean, and I know actors say this all the time, but I genuinely love working with the cast of The Flash and that production team, you know, we've been working together for a long time now, but they're all so talented, man. Like Grant and Jesse and Carlos, uh, you know, and Candice 
and Danielle, they are just such talented actors and such good people. And I just enjoy going to work just to hang out. And we're all pretty close. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just a great cast. And we, you know, we do, t- we do a lot together outside of work. Um, Jesse Martin and Rick Cosnett uh, directed a f- short film. It was their first uh, directing project, which I produced with some of the other folks from The Flash. And so it's become a family environment. Uh, so that's some of my favorite experiences coming out of that show is that it's the family environment and the fact that we all support each other creatively. And in terms of the character, I just love, there's two things I love about Captain Singh. One is his personal storyline. You know, uh, we know that he's, you know, married to this guy, Rob, and every now and then we get to peek into his personal life. And there's this looming, you know, storyline from the comic books where, uh, you know, he's got this secret relationship with the Pied Piper. And so we'll keep waiting for that to drop. Um, but I love that he is this uh, authority figure, that he's a person of color, that he's DC Comics' first openly gay character, um, and that we get to tease that storyline sometimes. And then uh, showing up to work, I love it when when they take Sing out of the office and he's, you know, shooting at bad guys and, and trying to catch the bad guys out on location and get to, involved in the action that's that's my favorite stuff to do amazing man well we'll wrap up patrick thank you so much for coming on the show my pleasure peter thank I, you i really appreciate it now it's your your time to plug away where can people follow you on social media what projects could should they be looking out for plug away Stay yeah uh, you can find me on social media patrick sabongi i didn't come up with a clever uh, handle but uh that's so it's easy to find me uh, i just uh, i'm working on a tv series right now for cbs it's a brand new show called blood and treasure uh, it was, it's a blast to shoot. I think you guys are going to love it. It's got action. It's got comedy. It's got drama. It's basically Indiana Jones and romancing the stone for TV called blood and treasure will be out on CBS probably next summer. Um, and, uh, and you know, I'm still working on the flash and, uh, who knows, you know, I stay busy. So keep an eye out for me. Absolutely. Well, seriously, we, uh, think I appreciate you coming on. We wish you all the best, man. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Absolutely. Well, this has been Popternative, youtube.com slash Popternative for brand new episodes um, for the video versions. If you don't want to see us, if you want to listen to us, iTunes, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts, we're there as well. Popternative.com is there also for the content as well. Until next time, this is Patrick Spongi and Peter Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.